Okay guys, we're back again at the uh, Farnese uh, DSO 152. And again, I'm only using this little oscilloscope because uh, I think it makes an excellent training, training platform. It's cheap um, and um, probably within the price range of most people who are interested in, you know, I'm interested in it from an automotive technician uh, capacity, just an amateur one. I am not a professional technician, guys. Not a professional automotive technician. Um, so the point to this little scope, again, because it's so affordable, uh, if, as a first-time user of a scope, and I'm no expert on scopes, guys, but I've been using it for a wee while. I kind of, I like to think I have a handle on at least the basics. Um, the, the fact that it's so cheap kind of removes the fear factor of using it, you know, the, the notion that, oh, if I make a mistake, I'm going to blow up my scope and, you know, there goes a 500 or a thousand plus dollars, you know, um, it's just not there with a $20 scope. So that's nice, right? So it makes for a good learning platform because of that. Right. So if you recall, um, the first um, installation to this little micro course uh, was actually dealing with how to select um, the proper voltage. Uh, with respect to the y-axis, uh, the vertical axis, right, on the left-hand side of the screen, guys, or, or both sides for that matter, but generally referencing the uh, vertical axis. And uh, today we're going to discuss uh, the X. Again, if you forget which one is X and Y, just think is X as a cross the screen. Helps me. And, uh, of course, this is our time base that we're dealing with, right? And if you recall, I spoke about the graticule being a 12 by 8 graticule in the in the case of this little scope. So our uh, time uh, base selection, guys, is right in the center of the screen, right? So lined up with the with the center line uh, again on the vertical axis, you'll find your time base selection. Now, some scopes present themselves in an entire screen format. I think, if I recall, snap on. Uh, scopes when you select like a hundred milliseconds for example the entire screen is displaying a hundred milliseconds of time in the case of most other scopes this selection here is speaking with respect to one graticule so in this case this is 20 milliseconds is represented by one graticule here so one additional uh, graticule uh, again, on the x-axis, the horizontal plane here, guys, that would be an additional 20 milliseconds, right? And an additional 20 milliseconds. So you can look at it as 20. So this is a zero reference point. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 brings us to the center of the screen. So if that's the center, half being 120, it's 240 milliseconds, which makes sense, right? 12 times 20, 240 milliseconds, or very close to a quarter second in this case, with respect to the entire display from left to right, again, on the in the horizontal plane, the x-axis being our time base, this represents almost a quarter second or 240 milliseconds of time. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So before, if you recall, because we were only dealing with the vertical axis, I only looked at basic and nine volt input from a battery, right? Nine volts ish, because we were really only interested in the, um, the trace and how it displaced with respect to the voltage scaling, right? Again, in this case, we're interested in the time base. So it doesn't really make sense to look at a DC voltage with respect to time base, because it's always the same. Right, you can see right now I'm not actually connected to anything and we just have this noise level. I've dropped the, uh, the uh, channel marker down here, guys, or our zero reference point for the trace just down screen a wee bit so that we're clear of the parameters. And I have them on screen here because when we use the internal um, signal generator, which the DSO-152 has, if you recall, it's on top of the screen here, I just have my little basic uh, leads that are supplied with the scope because they're more than adequate for this stage. Um, so the uh, mini coax is connected and at the top of the screen here, we have our uh, little terminal 
where we can select, where we can pick off the internally generated 1000 Hertz or one kilohertz signal. Okay. So all I need to do, and you think, well, where do I put the other lead? This is a common ground plane, guys, right? So this will be grounded internally, just the same way as the outer sheath here is. That's, this is um, a common point, so we don't have to actually hook this up. It's already hooked up internally. I hope that makes sense. So all we need to do is take the red lead, hook it up to the uh, test point here, and we should be able to pick off our internally generated, so you don't need anything else in order to appreciate this little waveform here, right? So before I hook that up, let's go back for just a minute here, because you'll be, you'll be asking yourself where, well, what do you actually select? Now keep in mind, guys, this little scope has an auto function, and I didn't mention it, or if I did mention it in the first module, uh, the first little presentation, I didn't mention it for the fact that, well, if you just start relying on the auto function, you don't really understand what's going on, you know? And it's like, <laughs> Well, nobody wants a pilot who can only fly under autopilot, right? When the time comes for a thorough understanding in the machine, uh, the auto function is not really doing you any favors. It's certainly handy, that's not to say it's useless, not by any stretch of the imagination, but to appreciate the basics, the fundamentals, steer clear of the auto function for a wee while, it'll do you a favor in the long run, I can assure you, right? So back to what I was gonna say here. How the hell do I actually have a setup here what are my default settings to try and maximize my uh, likelihood that I'll get a sensible or something on screen in order to appreciate? Again, this is just the noise, nothing's hooked up, guys, right? So I've always been taught in the books that I've learned it from because I've never had somebody actually give me any oscilloscope instruction. It's only been what I've been reading, and it's came from multiple sources with respect to automotive application, okay? Always default to 20 volts, 20 milliseconds. So this only goes to a maximum of 10 volts. Again, on this attenuation setting, guys, if you recall me mentioning that before. So what I've got here is five volts per division. Again, we discussed that last week. So 20 volt marker would be around here-ish on screen, right? So we can see 20 volts here. This little internal uh, signal generator goes nowhere near 20 volts. I can assure you, we'll see that momentarily but I go for 20 volts, 20 milliseconds. It will usually get you something on screen, 20, 20, okay? So I'm gonna hook up the, uh, the red lead. Let's see what we can see. All I'm doing is taking a little red alligator clip and it's only the red alligator clip you'll need, guys. And we've got something on screen here, right? It's not optimized. Again, we're not using the auto function in the interest of trying to understand what's going on here. So we've got, again, it's five volts per division. So we're not quite coming up to one division here. Just disregard the uh, parameters it's displaying on screen here, guys. See if we can make sense of this first. It's not quite five volts. It's not going below the zero reference. So it's, we've got DC selected here on our coupling. That's relevant. And again, we've got 20 milliseconds. Clearly not quite fast enough to actually see what's going on. It's a jumble here, right? And the triggering is in auto. Again, I'm gonna get into triggering probably in the next little discussion, the next little module we have guys here. So let's just take a moment here and look at the, uh, the uh, parameters that are being displayed on the uh, screen. Measurement functions, basically. So we have a, a maximum of about 3.8 volts a minimum of around zero volts, all making sense. So the average is in between the two. That's telling me that we're gonna have a duty cycle of around 50%-ish. And the RMS value, which is calculated, voltage peak to peak, nearly four volts. Frequency, not making a lot of sense. We'll get back to this in a minute. Duty cycle of 40%-ish, no sure. And this is a very strange, terminology they've used here, guys, but this is the period, right? Looks like cycle to me. Doesn't make much sense to me, to be quite honest, but this is the period that we're looking at. And this is not making sense because these calculations are coming from what's on screen, guys. If you don't have a good trace, a good image, these measurements are gonna be difficult for the little rig to calculate. 
Does that make sense? I'll say that again. If you don't have a clear image, stable, these parameters are coming from what this can measure on screen. Okay? So let's see if we can clean this up a wee bit. So I suggest this is a this is a pulse train, which again is internally generated. We're picking it off with a red lead here, guys, and looking at it. What I do is I look at these as pickets in a fence or fence boards, right? And if I want to get more detail on the fence I'm looking at, I want less distance between me and the fence. Make sense? So let's go to, uh, let's just toggle through the selection wheel up top here, guys. Let's just go to the voltage for a second. So I want less distance or, um, Yeah, look at his less distance. That that kind of makes the most sense, right? So if I want less distance between me and the fence, will I get greater or less detail? Will the fence look bigger or smaller, basically? Less distance, the fence looks bigger, right? Less distance, the fence looks bigger. Now that's maybe a wee bit too big, or I could, I suppose I could move the channel down a bit, a wee bit, get it out of the measurements. So just to keep things clean. So I selected a smaller per division voltage in order to get a bigger display. I hope that makes sense. Let's now toggle to the time base and let's see if we can get a little bit more detail with respect to spreading the pickets out, right? So again, if I want to see the fence in more detail, I want to get less distance between me and the fence. So less distance, less meaning down. Let's go down. Let's keep going down and the pickets in the fence are becoming clearer and clearer until we can see them in great detail. Now that's maybe a wee bit too much detail, right? I like about five or six. This will be a personal preference thing, guys. And depending on what you're trying to achieve, how much detail you want to see the trace actually in um, will be uh, will dictate how close you get, how you, how you zoom in or zoom out. Again, look at it as fence pickets. If you want to see it in more detail, height-wise, put less distance between yourself. If you want to see it in more detail width-wise, with respect to the pickets, put less distance between yourself. And this, of course, the reverse is true, right? If I want to see it in less detail, start backing up or putting more distance between me and the fence. I hope that makes sense as a simple wee analogy. It helps me, right? So again, let's see what we can see here. So let's let's keep it on here because we want to see this in great detail for just a moment here, right? So you can see we have, uh, this is the pulse string. It's clearly a digital square wave that the little internal generator, this is the only option you have, guys. It's, obviously, it's just basic. It's just used for calibration purposes with your probes and it makes for a good learning um, tool as well if you're not familiar with the scope. It's simple, it's built in, it's fixed so you can understand what you're looking at. It's automatically measuring a max voltage, a minimum voltage, that's making sense, right? So if we read, that's one division, two division, three division, uh, three and a bit. So the rig's telling us it's 3.4 volts, looks about right, the minimum voltage looks about right. Uh, the average would be a function of the duty cycle. Duty cycle is 50%, right? So it's high, high for half the time that it's for the half of the, the uh, cycle, and it's low for half of the cycle, 50% duty cycle. The peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage, that also makes sense because it's not going below the zero reference here. The frequency we know from the manual that is a fixed 100, uh, or sorry, one kilohertz, 1,000 hertz. And here, again, strangely labeled cycle, it looks like, is actually the period, but that's simply um, one divided by the frequency itself will give you the period or 0 0.001 seconds, one millisecond. That all makes sense. Let's toggle this away so you can just see the time base a wee bit easier. So we're at 200 microseconds here. I didn't select this guys, right? I simply toggled down until I got an image I was uh, 
um, happy with, and it happens to be 200 microseconds uh, per division, right? So let's just see if this makes sense. So 200 microseconds per division, that would be two, four, six, eight, 10, or one uh, millisecond. Add up, there's a thousand microseconds in one millisecond, yeah? That all adds up. So again, if you get nothing out of this little module, just appreciate how you actually zoom manually, right? If I, this, I'm too close to this fence now and I wanna see it in less detail. I wanna put more, more space between me and my fence, right? So when I say back up, I need more space between me and my fence. Let's go more space between me and my fence, right? Oh, no, I've got, no, I'm too far away from the fence. I wanna see it in more detail. Let's put less space between me and my fence, right? The fence is too high. I can't see it in any real detail. Let's toggle over to the, uh, to the voltage selection. Again, let's back up, right? Put more space between you and the top of the fence. No, it's too low. Put less space between you and the top of the fence. So you can see, you can manipulate the amplitude and the time base just by using that little fence analogy, guys. Perhaps it won't work for everybody. Perhaps somebody will even find that confusing. But if you put more distance between you and the uh, and the pickets of the pulse train, right? Now keep in mind, it's not always gonna be pickets, of course. That would That's just kind of a digital analogy. But if you put more space between you and the waveform, you're gonna see it less. You're gonna zoom out. You put less space between you and the waveform, you're gonna see it in more detail. Keep in mind, these measurements are only gonna make sense if you have a clear image. Watch the measurements here as I actually kind of bastardize the waveform. You can see now the duty cycle doesn't make any sense. You can see the frequency starting to alter. There, the frequency is gone. It can't make any more sense that the image that's on screen is too confused to do the calculation. I'll leave it at that, guys. I hope that makes some sense. Next time we'll discuss uh, the manipulation of the voltage and the uh, time base in more detail. And maybe we'll talk about the trigger in greater detail. We'll make that the objective of maybe module three. And uh, we'll also talk about some of the other functions, the coupling, and just see the thing in a wee bit more detail in general. Right, that's it, boys. I hope this makes sense. Cheers.